drawing inspiration. Be free. Speak to me. I am feeling this vibe right now. Welcome back to another video. I am so excited to share with you what I got in the most recent Credo sale. I got a haul. And I'm gonna try a new thing today where I don't roll my intro clip because even though my intro clip is quite short, I figure maybe you guys don't wanna sit through it. So let me know if you like that too. Cool, let's get to the makeup stuff. Okay friends, today's video is a vibe. I was so excited when my Credo Beauty stuff came that I'm like making a day of it. I went out and got Starbucks, which is like the first time I've done that in a while. If you didn't immediately notice, I also rearranged some stuff in the background. I'm trying out these pineapple lights. I don't think you can even see that they are pineapple shaped, but they are and they're pretty. And I even am playing into the extra vibe today by pulling out a new candle that I put in my little like candle holder back here. Starbucks is gonna live in the background today too. But just to keep the vibe, is like a true unboxing haul. I have not unboxed any of this stuff yet. I think I will be able to get almost a full face out of the products that I got because my whole idea when I was shopping the sale was to get one item per kind of category of makeup, different parts of the face that I have always wanted to get and that I thought you guys would really like to see reviewed. So I put a lot of time and effort into deciding which ones I was gonna get, but I pretty much have one product per part of the face. I do remember, however, and this is the start of it, that I got multiple like foundation products. And there is a reason for that because I wanna do a review comparing the Alima Pure Pressed Foundation and the Satin Matte Foundation that is loose powder. I ran out of my Satin Matte Foundation that's loose from them a long time ago. I used it for years, I loved it. But I have not tried the like rose hip pressed foundation from them and that's what this is. <laughs> Okay, next we have the Kosas Air Brow Gel. I am so freaking excited to use this. I've been using one brow gel, only one specifically, that's super cheap. I'll talk about that later too. But I was excited to get a new brow gel to try, especially one I've heard so many good things about. And then I got the Kiar Weiss Matte Naturally Liquid Lip, and I got the refill of it, because I think that you can technically use the refill on its own. Listen, I know that I should just buy the actual lip product itself, but I am just now moving to full time on YouTube. So I'm trying to pinch pennies wherever I can. I hope that this is usable. We'll find out later. Next. <gasps> guys. Okay. I got two different PYT products. I have never used PYT before, but I got one of their hot flush blushes. We'll talk about shades and stuff later. And then I also got one of their eyeshadow palettes, the like newly formulated ones. I am ridiculously excited to do an eye look with that today. Ooh, yes. Okay. So I got the Ilya Super Serum Skin Tint. I have wanted this for so long. There is a reason why I got this specifically. And this I think is what I'm going to use on the face today. And then I might follow up like a couple areas with the powders that I got from Alima Pure. And then I also got this Saint Jane Luxury Lip Shine simply because I was exploring and this was like a splurge product for me, but I was going through the Credo website and not only did I fall in love with the color of this one, but I have a thing for sunflower oil. My skin just loves it. And I was looking at the ingredients of this one, trying to justify buying the color that I really, really liked. And I saw that sunflower seed oil is the first ingredient in this one. So it is like a lip gloss. It's such beautiful packaging. We will talk about it near the end of the video. And is there anything else? I think there is two more products. I got the Aether Beauty Supernova Crushed Diamond Highlighter. So this is the individual panned one that doesn't come in like a palette. This one is supposed to be way more intense than the other Ilya highlights that come in the palette. So I'm super excited with this. I think Khaki refers to it as like painting with magic. Definitely gonna use that on the face today. And then this, this is the Ilya Night Light Bronzing Powder. I have been so excited to try the Ilya Bronzer. Really any pressed powder products from Ilya. I'm really interested to see how they perform. I almost got the highlight too, but I decided to go with the like Supernova Crushed highlighter from Aether instead. But yeah, so I am super excited to use all of these on the face today. I am going to bring you in a little bit and we are going to get started playing with makeup. Playing with makeup. Okay, Samantha, calm down. Okay, Super Serum Skin Tint. I'm going to start with this one from Ilya. For some of the products that I bought, I've never seen a review of them, but this one I obviously have. Let's see, I got this in the shade Sombrio, otherwise known as shade 2.5. So the first thing that comes to mind um, that I'm remembering from the reviews is that a little goes a long way with this product. So I think I'm gonna start with like one, two, three drops. And I am going to apply this with my fingers today. <laughs> I have all my skincare on already. Ooh, not the texture that I was kind of anticipating. Whoa, okay. 
putting into words what I'm feeling. I gotta pull a mirror to look at this. I can't use the viewfinder. Okay, so when I first put it on my face, those three drops, I did not think that they were gonna spread because it doesn't feel quite as like liquidy slippy as for some reason I had thought it was going to. I have to say this is like drying down to a point that I feel like it's not moving around too much, but it definitely gave me enough time to spread it out on the face. And that's just three drops, guys. I do think I'm gonna take like a drop and see if I can't get a little more coverage, just like under my under eyes. Yeah, I feel like I was able to get a little bit more coverage from that. Not exactly what I was expecting, even after watching reviews of this product. It's kind of ironic for me to say this because I am a YouTuber, but you just never know when you watch a review how it's going to feel on your skin. Reviews help. And as a YouTuber who does do like product reviews, I try my best to think of unique ways to describe the product to you guys, but it's never gonna be the same as having it in your hands. And that's kind of what I'm experiencing with this product. My skin looks really beautiful and it doesn't feel sticky. This might be like my daily sunscreen. I'm gonna break into the pressed foundation from Alima Pure while I talk to you. Oh, oh, it came in like three different parts. That's fine. I just, that's not what I was expecting. So I did just run out of my tinted sunscreen that I was using, which I really enjoyed. And I actually think I will repurchase it. It was like a drugstore option too. I will put, well, I might put a picture up here, but I will at least link it down in the comments below, description box below. Ooh, okay. I'm going to dip into this with my foundation brush. This is quite dirty. Let me grab my towel to at least brush off some of the excess. Tomorrow is my brush cleaning day. But anyway, I was kind of excited to get another sunscreeny product that I could use that had some tint to it because I've been using that tinted sunscreen a lot. If I'm not filming a video or going out somewhere, I don't put on a ton of makeup, but I always put on a sunscreen. So I really enjoy like one of my skincare steps being tinted and kind of perfecting. So I think that Ilia one will be really good for that. With a more clean brush, I'm going into this rose hip powder from Lima Pure. And I'm just going to like powder under the eye a little bit. This is in the shade Sesame. So it does have a tint to it. Let's see if it can't like cover up my rosacea a little bit right here. Provide a little bit extra coverage in my dark areas as a protruding eye queen. I do kind of want more coverage right here though. I wonder if I use a more concentrated brush, if I couldn't build up some coverage here. Mm, not really. I mean, that is pretty compared to this side that doesn't have any yet. I do feel like that did a little bit of perfecting. I'm gonna put some on this side and then I might pull out a concealer to put on. I didn't purchase a concealer cause I already have so many, but I might pull out a concealer just to get a little more coverage under the eyes. I don't really feel like anywhere else on my face needs it. I'll be right back. I am back. I did use a little bit of this Flower Beauty liquid concealer and a little bit of the Air Perez Arnica concealer as well together. I love both these concealers by the way and I do actually use them together quite often. I can always tell you how in a different video, but these are not part of the Credo haul. So let's keep moving to the Ilia bronzer. Ooh. Oh, please don't be broken. Please don't be broken. Okay, I don't know if I will include that entire freak out in editing, but I just dropped this and I seriously thought that I broke it, but I did not, thankfully. This is what we are going to put on the face next. And I got this in the shade Drawn In, I think is the shade. Gorgeous packaging, by the way, absolutely stunning. And the mirror is really nice. So I think I might actually just use the mirror on this thing, but I'm taking a traditional blush brush. This is the kind of brush that I've really been liking for bronzers lately. But the shade of this looks really promising for my skin tone. I almost feel like it's a little olive pulling. Ooh, okay. I'm back and I've bronzed up the face. I am in love with the tone. I also think I went a little heavier than I normally would. I did mention before I stepped off camera just now that I liked the olive kind of undertone, beigey olive undertone that I feel like this has. Olive tones specifically speak to me because I've been exploring my own skin tone. And fun fact, I am partially Lebanese, obviously appear very white, identify as white, but I learned recently about pale olive skin tones and how it is possible to be quite fair and also have some olive undertones. I've done all of those tests, like looking at your veins and seeing what color they are when you look at them to decide whether you're cool or warm. And I've always thought I was neutral because I see both blue and green in my veins, even a little purple sometimes. I always just kind of have identified as a neutral leaning warm 
skin tone. But if you're not familiar with olive undertones and what that means, obviously warm leans kind of yellow and cool leans kind of pink. And then people will refer to neutral skin tones as being kind of a combination of both yellow and pink. So a little bit of like a peachy undertone. I love the way that peaches look on my skin. I think peaches look great on a lot of different skin tones. With that in mind, all of the base products that I bought in this haul, so both of the Alima Pure powders and the Ilia, mentioned olive undertones. So I went with a couple new products that pull olive in order to decipher once and for all if that is something that I am. But hopefully even if these products don't work out, I will then know that I'm a neutral undertone and not an olive undertone. I'm going to open up these PYT products next, by the way. I had to go get scissors. Be free. I'm debating if I want to finish my face with blush and then go into eyes. Hmm, I definitely can get a fall look out of this eyeshadow palette. I kind of want to start with eyes and finish off with the blush. I don't know why, that's just what I'm feeling. So we are going to get started going into this PYT palette. Mmm, drawing inspiration? Speak to me. Just to be fancy and tie the look together, I think I'm going to start with a little bit of this blush shade. This is the PYT Hot Flush Blush in the shade Exhale. And I'm just going to take some of Exhale on my biggest fluffy brush like I pretty much always start with and just push that into the crease a little bit and maybe down onto the lid, just kind of use it as a base shade to build other color on top of, but I think that will ultimately kind of ensure that the look ends up tying together. Bring in a little bit of color, I am going to move into this kind of taupey a little bit mauve shade up here. And that is shade five in the palette. And I'm just going to use this to start carving out that crease, making it a little bit more defined. And then just for this next kind of fun pop of color, I'm going for this shade over here, which is shade eight in the palette. I'm hoping on camera that it isn't coming across too pink because in real life, it's actually quite, let me swatch it for you. A little bit of like a peachy orange, very light terracotta kind of shade. So what I think I might do is go in this dark brown first and pack that on this outer corner. Ooh, that is pigmented. I really like that. And I'm making sure to just kind of blend this into the crease as well, pull it out to create that kind of V shape that I like. And then I'm just very lightly kind of feathering it toward the center. I'm gonna do that on the other side and then I wanna put that peach shade in the middle. Wow, guys, I did not think that I was going to like the PYT eyeshadow formula as much as I am currently enjoying it. It's just not nearly as much fallout as I was expecting. But now I am questioning if I want to do a halo eye and I actually, I think the answer is yes. So I'm going to take that same brown and just pack it on my inner corner. As a protruding eye queen, I try to make sure that I don't bring it into the side of the nose, but I do want to bring that shadow just right here and just kind of make sure that it's connected by the crease. And now I am flip flopping because I really love this peachy shade and I could go for an all matte halo eye, which I don't always do on this channel, but I think looks really flattering on protruding eyes specifically, but I'm also kind of drawn to this taupey pink shimmery shade. I think I want to swatch them next to each other. Do I want to go a little more wild and pop-ish and do this kind of peachy pinky orange shade or go with this shimmery shade? I think I'm gonna go with the shimmer. Okay, so I'm not wetting my finger or anything. I am going into that shade. That is shade two in the palette. And I am just going to pop that on the center here. Okay, I think that is it on the eyes, guys. I think we're looking kind of subtle and beautiful. I haven't done a whole lot of subtle looks on the channel recently, so I'm digging it. And I took that darker brown shade that I used on the outside and inside of the lid and just kind of brought it underneath the eyes here. I think I am ready to try this Kosas Airbrow. Man, I feel like everyone says this about this Kosas packaging, but this is so beautiful and it's so reminiscent of like the 90s, early 2000s, like gel pens and glittery mechanical pencils. Guys, I'm just going for it. Oh, hello. <gasps> hello. Ooh, this spoolie, friends. It's so like rigid. And oh my gosh, this is like dry. It's not too, um, 
liquidy, which is literally all I want in a brow gel, is for it to dry down completely. Granted, the shade I got is a little warmer than my natural color, but I don't mind that too much. I'm gonna go in with a second coat of this stuff on the right side, just to see if I can't kind of use the pigment to fill in areas, you know, the bald patches that I feel like all of us have at least like one of on one of our eyebrows. This is the eyebrow where I have a bald patch up top. I'm liking the amount of tint that this provides too. It's not over the top and it is spreadable. I feel like so far I'm experiencing that I can kind of move the tint around a little bit with a spoolie after the fact. I don't know how I feel about the shade yet. I think I will know once I finish the face. Okay, let me do the other brow and mascara because I did not buy a mascara in this haul. I will put on mascara in the rest of my brows and come back and we can do blush and lips and talk about my thoughts on this brow gel in just a second. Okay, I love this. I used the uh, Fit Glow Beauty mascara, by the way, on my eyes today in case you were curious. But these brows, guys, when I say they are like glued in place, I actually think this product made me realize that I need to trim my brows a little bit because when I like push them straight up, they are so long. <laughs> And yes, I still have some bald spots, not like totally filled in everywhere, but that is a look I like to rock most days. Is this brow a little darker than this one though? Do they not put as much product in or is that just the light? Eh, maybe, it's not a big deal. Okay, so we are finally doing this PYT blush in the shade Exhale. I'm really not sure how well this is going to show up on my skin because it is such a pale tone. Oh no, it's coming through. Well, I was gonna say, even if it doesn't show up really vibrantly, I do seem to remember Khaki saying on her channel that the PYT Exhale Blush, even in the old formula, I think this is the same shade though, is really great to use when you want to tone down a blush that maybe you went overboard on. Layering a little bit of this light shade on top can really bring everything back down to earth a little bit. But actually, I think it is showing up on my face. It's just a very simple, bright, bright pink shade that I don't have in my collection right now. This is like the kind of shade that I would love to use during winter to just kind of achieve if I went like even more simple on the eyes did like a one and done neutral shade on the eyes or something or even use like a bronzer this is the kind of like pale flush that I like to use for like wintry looks where your cheeks just look a little bit like a tiny bit flushed I think I'll use this a lot for winter looks but I am surprised I haven't found a really light light pink blush like this yet in clean beauty that I liked and um would add to my collection because I think this is gorgeous. Okay, I'm noticing a kind of blurring effect and I don't know which product did that. Huh. My skin looks really nice though. And now my friends, we are onto the best part of any makeup look in my opinion. The lips. <laughs> oh my gosh, guys, I am feeling this vibe right now. Oh, and I am saved on the Kiar Weiss lip. Anyway, these are the only two lip products that I got. I'm really excited about both of them. I think I'm going to swatch them both. Not only so you guys can see them, but also so I can kind of decide what I want to wear for this look today. Okay, so ignore the two swatches that we did earlier, but this is the Kiar Wise. Their liquid matte lip in the shade Honor. And then we've got the Saint Jane Beauty Luxury Lip Shine in the shade Alchemy. This one is, it's surprising me. I don't know about you, but in the bottle, it looks a little bit more vibrant and on the skin, it does have this kind of orangey ruby cast. And it is still quite sparkly, but just not as pigmented as I thought it was gonna come across on the lips. I'm thinking that I'm going to want to go with this lip gloss today and see if I can't kind of build it up and play with it. But first, it wouldn't be a good swatch video, you know, if I didn't try this on the lips first. So I'm going to put the Kiar Weiss on so you guys can at least see what it looks like. Okay, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. Let me take you in and see if you can't see this. You see how it is not fully covering the lips? Like it's almost slippy and where I part it, you just see through straight to the lip. Maybe it just needs a couple coats, but that is surprising to me. I figure from Kiar Wise, that is not what I expected. I expected a super opaque product going on, but I'm gonna let this dry down a second and put on another coat and then see how I feel. Okay, friends, I did just put on another layer. Second layer is not dried down yet, but I'm wondering if it is just my lips or the lip balm I put on my lips like hours ago, but I did put one on today. That's reacting with this weird because I really wanna give this a benefit of the doubt. And I do like the shade. I think I could maybe even make the shade work for fall if I used like a darker lip liner with it. Obviously I haven't used a lip liner today. I'm just swatching it. But why is it still kind of see-through? I don't 
don't know if the camera is going to pick that up or not, but I feel like two coats is all I should be required to do with a matte lipstick. If you gotta do like three or four coats to get it really opaque, that's not ideal. I'm just going to rule this as a error on my part maybe, like a first use could maybe have prepped my lips better or something situation. Because I do like the color. I think during springtime and summer, it's like a really bright color I can wear on its own. And during fall or winter months, I would even use it, especially during winter months. I like that pale look, like I said, for winter. I feel like the pale pink look during winter is very like Britney Spears circa the 2000s-esque. Anyways guys I'm going to remove this and then we will put on this lip gloss and I think that will be the final look. Be right back. Okay for the record that also just wiped off so easily for a matte liquid lip. Okay but we are taking this gorgeous gorgeously packaged Saint Jane Beauty uh, luxury lip shine. And I'm going to do one coat of this. We will assess the situation and then we'll come back and see if I want more coats. Ooh, I really like this applicator. Dipping in a second time for the upper lip. Ooh, this is cute. I would say this is a lip gloss texture too. It's not like a liquid lip balm kind of thing. I'm gonna put on another coat just to see how I like it. Okay, I do think that the second coat got more shine. I love the texture of this lip gloss. It is, I mean like a tiny bit sticky, but it's more so just like kind of emollient. I don't really know how to describe it. Thick and emollient is the way I would describe it. Ooh, oh, I know how to describe it. If you have tried the Bite Beauty, uh, what are they called? Like the lip masks. They have a clear one and they have some colored ones, but that particular product, if you have tried that, this feels like that. It is that thick, but it is not uncomfortable and it is really not all that sticky. It is just thick and emollient. I don't know how many more times I'm gonna say that. All right, guys, that is it for this Credo Beauty haul video. If you have any feelings about the products that I did buy, any recommendations for how to use them, I know this was a very first impressions kind of video. Help me out. Let me know in the comments how you like to use these products and what other products from these brands you recommend I try next. If you got anything in the Credo Beauty sale, I would love to hear what you bought. I just love talking to people about these hauls. But this is where I'm going to leave you. Thank you so much for watching to this point. If you have gotten here, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next video. Mwah. Bye.